Hey everyone, this is David Brown, and this video will be a summary of the results of the 2024 season of the Braddock Bay Hawkwatch. The photo here is the Hawkwatch platform located in Braddock Bay Park, which is near Rochester, New York, along the south shore of Lake Ontario. Braddock Bay is a spring hawk watch, and our goal is to keep track of all of the migrating raptors that are passing through this area. We conduct the count every day in March, April, and May, and there were also a few days in February and June this year as well that were conducted by volunteers. The count is done from Braddock Bay Park on most days, but if the winds are out of the north or the northeast, we do have an alternate lookout that we move to, which is at Frisbee Hill Park. Jumping straight into the individual species, we'll start with our less common vulture, which is the black vulture. This year we had a total of four of them, and this percentage here that I'll list for every species is how many we had this year compared to the 10-year average. And we can see that the 10-year average for black vultures is three, so just slightly above average this year. And the last line for every species will be the daily high count. All of this year's black vultures came on separate days, so the daily high count was one, and I listed the date of the first one, which is March 16th. Turkey vultures are much more numerous with a total of more than 28,000, which was above average, and the daily high count was 3,790 on April 6th. We had a total of 113 ospreys this season, which was only 60% of the 10-year average of 188, and the daily high count was 14 on April 19th, and as you can see in the bottom photo there, sometimes we get really nice looks at osprey carrying fish. We had a great year for golden eagles with a total of 51, which was 188% of the 10-year average. In fact, it was the fourth highest season ever, and the count has been run for nearly 50 years now. And the daily high count was 8 on March 26th. And if you look at the photo in the top left, that's actually a photo that I took on February 29th. Right as I arrived in the area, I stopped at Braddock Bay Park just to make sure everything was good to go for the start of the count the next day. And right as I was driving into the park, this adult golden eagle was soaring right overhead. So that was a really good way to start off the season. We had 599 northern harriers, which was above average, and the daily high count was 58 on April 10th. In the top left photo, you can see an adult male northern harrier, also known as a gray ghost. And in the bottom photo, you see one of the brown types, so either a female or a juvenile, cruising low to the grass through the park. You can see it passing the Canada geese that are always hanging out in the grass near the platform. Moving on to the exhibitors, we had 3,353 sharp-shinned hawks, which was above average. It was 123% of the 10-year average. And the daily high count was 783 on April 19th, which is a date that we're going to mention multiple times in this presentation because that was the biggest day of the season in a truly spectacular flight. Although sharp-shinned hawks were above average, Cooper's hawks were below average with 205, which was only 73% of the 10-year average, and a daily high count of 14 on March 13th. So the Cooper's hawk migration is concentrated more towards the beginning of the season, whereas the sharp shins really pick up in the middle of the season. We had one American goshawk, which was a juvenile, on March 26th. There you see the photos of the underside and the top side. One is well below the 10-year average of six, but this is a species that's really been declining a lot over the years. Last year we had seven, but the two seasons before that we didn't have any at all, so... It's a species that's possible for us to miss completely now, but if you go back a few decades, it was something that was quite common. We had a great season for bald eagles with 1,419, more than 150% of the 10-year average, and the daily high count was 143 on May 21st, which is the second highest single day ever for bald eagles. Moving on to the Budios, red-shouldered hawks were average with 349 compared to the 10-year average of 348, and we had a high count of 55 on March 12th. And these are another species that are more concentrated towards the beginning of the season. Broad-winged hawks were our most numerous migrant this season with more than 33,000, which was well above the 10-year average. The daily high count was 10,901 on April 19th. So that was a day where we just had perfect winds during the peak time for the adult broad-winged hawk migration. We had some rain in the morning, and then once that cleared out and it started to clear up, we had a huge flight. 
In fact, we had a single hour with more than 11,000 hawks, and most of those were broad-winged hawks. We had two Swainson's hawks this season, and they're a rare migrant through New York State. It's more of a western species of beautio, but they seem to get a few that wander into the east every year. The first one was on April 10th and was a dark morph here you see in the top photo. And then the second one was on April 28th, which you see it was a light morph here in the bottom photo. And actually that second one stuck around all the way through May 6th, which was the last time it was seen. And actually when this photo was taken, that's the day it gave us the best looks. Red-tailed hawks were below average with 1,279, only 68% of the 10-year average. And the daily high count was 113 on April 10th. In the top right photo, we see a typical adult eastern red-tailed hawk or the Borealis subspecies. And on the bottom photo, we see a more heavily marked individual that may be a member of the Abieticola or northern subspecies. Rough-legged hawks are another species that are really declining over time. This season we had 32, which is less than half of the 10-year average, but it was actually about twice as many as we got last spring. So in some ways it's good news, and in other ways it's bad news. The daily high count was 3 on April 28th, and you can see they also come in light morphs and dark morphs. You see a dark morph here on the top right, and the light morph here on the bottom. Moving on to our first falcon, the American Kestrel, we had 307, which was below average, and we had a daily high count of 46 on April 10th. Merlins were right around average with a total of 37 and a daily high count of 4 on April 15th. And peregrine falcons were just above average with 31 compared to the average of 30 and a daily high count of 4 on May 13th. And you can see an adult peregrine in the top photo and a juvenile in the bottom photo. We had two Mississippi kites this season. The first one was an adult on May 1st that migrated over Braddock Bay Park. And it's a little unusual to get them that early. Normally they come in the second half of May. And in fact, the second one that we had was on May 16th. And we see it in this bottom photo. It's a sub-adult, so you see the banding on the tail. And this one migrated over Frisbee Hill. And finally, we had a short-eared owl on April 8th. And this is a species that we don't get every year, but we usually get around one or two a year. Looking at the season as a whole, we had a total of 69,359 migrating raptors, which was 120% of the 10-year average of around 58,000. And we had a daily high count of 12,292 on April 19th. And again, that's the day we had a really big broad-winged hawk flight and a lot of sharp-shinned hawks that day as well, and really a lot of everything that was migrating at that time. And being in the middle of the season, that's some of the best variety of species that we get. A couple of other facts about the season. We had 19 species of raptors, which is slightly above what we normally get. Normally we would get 17 or 18. There's just those few species that some years we get them and some years we don't. Things like American goshawk, short-eared owl, Mississippi kite, and Swainson's hawk. So we got all four of them this season. So we just ended up with more variety than we normally get. We had 10 species out of the 19 that were above average and nine species that were below average. And this was the highest total since 2017. So I've been doing the count since 2019. So out of all the seasons I've done, this was the highest overall total. It was a great spring for birding. A lot of rarities showed up and I had around 230 total species for Monroe County. Here's some of the highlights and these are just birds that were seen from the Hawk Watch platform. Starting in the bottom left, we have a Ross's goose with a couple of Canada geese. Ross's goose is sort of just a smaller version of a snow goose, but it's much more rare. Then in the middle photo, we have a flock of Brant that migrated past in early May. And this was actually a new species for me for Monroe County. It's a rare migrant in the spring and you sort of need the right weather conditions, usually southerly wind and also some rain to knock them down lower. In the top right, we have a tri-colored heron that flew directly over the platform and is one of only a handful of county records for that species. And then in the bottom right, we had the real star of the season, which was a black-billed magpie, one of only a few records for the entire state and the first Monroe County record in 75 years. This video is just a short summary of the entire season but you can go back and watch each individual daily summary video on the Lyco Birds YouTube channel. 
there's a playlist where you can find all of those videos. And once again, I'd like to say thank you for a great season, especially to Dana Ford and Braddock Bay Raptor Research for really being the ones who make this count possible. In the left photo, you see part of the group that was around for the last day of the count, including Dana there in the middle. And in the photo on the right, me and Kim Steininger. So thank you again to Kim, who came up from Delaware to spend the entire season doing all the morning birding and then spending all day at the Hawk Watch with me. So thank you to all of the volunteers and visitors that make the count possible and help out and make the Braddock Bay Hawk Watch such a fun place to spend the spring. This slide says the end, but really it's a photo from the beginning. Remember how I mentioned that golden eagle that I saw on February 29th? That's the day I took this photo when I first arrived in the area. So as I'm sitting here in mid-June recording this video, just a little throwback to the end of February when it was cold and snowy. And one final thank you to everyone who came along on this journey, whether in person or virtually through my videos. You're all a part of the Hawk Watch and part of what makes it such a fun and unique experience. From Lyco Birds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.